As the situation with the pandemic spread of the coronavirus demands that more and more people around the world adhere to the law of mass quarantine or even self-quarantine to protect themselves and others, the question that arises for teachers of English is how can I continue to teach English using an online teleconference or e-teaching platform? Is it possible to have the same aims and expect similar outcomes in an online course with those I usually have while teaching face-to-face? -face? And how can I check my learners' progress? You're going to hear many perspectives and suggestions from different teachers and teacher trainers. Here's my own perspective coming from someone with more than 20 years in distance education. When we look at distance education, we tend to immediately focus on and prioritize the medium, you know, the online platforms and how we're going to deal with them if we've never taught online before. That's fair, and we certainly have to consider and get acquainted with the means uh, we're going to be using to teach online. But before we consider that dimension, we have to look at pedagogy. What does this mean? Three things. First and foremost, you have to know your teaching context. Get out of the autopilot mode, if you are in such a mode, that is, and think about who you're teaching, your learner or learners, why you're teaching them, the target situation, and so on. See more about the topic uh, in, in this video here. These parameters do not change. Teachers are the same and the target situation, of course, stays the same. What changes? That's the second thing to consider. Your instructional approach. Ask yourself, can I realistically do what I used to do in my face-to-face -face classes, in an online or distance class? Do tasks and activities work in the same way? Does group work work in the same way? What other constraints should I consider? What other restrictions does distance teaching pose? More importantly, and this is the third thing to consider, how do I provide feedback? And how can I be certain that my learners make the best of the feedback that I provide? Well, let's consider all of these questions because these are, for me, the most essential concerns in distance teaching and learning, and especially so if we are teaching a foreign language. So, the first thing that has to change in your engagement with distance teaching is your attitude. You have to have a positive outlook and acknowledge the advantages that the distance mode has to offer. You see, if we look at distance teaching only as an imposed inevitability, as a necessity, then we are probably missing the huge advantages that it can offer. And I mean advantages other than keeping yourself and others healthy at these times. What are the advantages of distance teaching? One immediate advantage is that nowadays distance teaching takes place online. And this means that it uses a medium with which younger people are very familiar with. In other words, you will see, if you've never taught online before, that the first meetings online are exciting. The learners are more eager to engage with you in this way. And this is because, probably for the first time, they experience that school can use a medium that they use outside of school all the time, online platforms. Now, we have to be careful. This initial excitement can very quickly wear off. If you are unfamiliar with online environments, with using a camera and chatting in real time, if you are negatively disposed towards this particular form of teaching, then chances are that this initial excitement and engagement will be lost. So, work on your own attitude first. Realize that you cannot get away with having a negative attitude towards distance or online teaching. Your attitude towards the medium communicates. You don't have to be an expert on everything online in order to have a positive attitude towards online teaching. Simply open up and accept the opportunities that 21st century internet technology offers. So, that's you. 
But what can you do to keep your learners engaged? First, realize that your learners already use English online. They have an increased familiarity with the language. They play video games in English and spend endless hours watching YouTube videos. This means that you are given the really unique opportunity to bring the real and authentic use of English, words and all, in your English class. Then realize that without physical proximity, you don't have access to what your learners really do during your class. Are they paying attention to you? Are they following your instructions and guidelines? How engaged are they really? You see, as learners stay in the comfort of their home, and as all they really have to do is keep their online connection open, the burden of keeping the communication alive falls inevitably on you. Suddenly, when the medium of interaction has changed, everything is likely to change. But this may not be necessarily a bad thing. Yes, you are more responsible for these online lessons, but you have to change the way you approach them. What you should do, especially if you follow a rather traditional approach to your face-to-face -face teaching, you know, being at the forefront of activity all the time, managing and controlling everything, uh, you should consider stopping that when you teach online. Because it is likely to multiply many times in the distance mode. When you teach online, remember to communicate more with your learners. Ask more questions. Be prepared to use the learner's mother tongue if you share it. Ask everyone to use their cameras. And of course, use your own camera. Your learners must be able to see you speak to them. For once, be yourself. This is what is expected in online interactions. You have to feel more relaxed. Allow yourself to grow as your acquaintance with the online medium increases. Be open and sincere with your learners. Express your feelings, your fears and hopes from the first meeting. Surprise them by being a normal human being for once. Your learners will love you for it and be more open and engaged. Teaching online and being comfortable with it also means developing appropriate lesson plans. Now, this depends largely on the teaching context. Large classes are obviously very different from smaller or one-to-one -one classes. But one thing to take from this video is that online teaching requires careful planning. Generally speaking, online lesson plans should not be over-ambitious. They should incorporate fewer activities, especially at the beginning of the online course, when everyone is still new at this. Remember that the most important thing of all is to allow your learners the time to consider everything you offer them, every reading or listening input, every task, every activity. So for this, allow more time. Time is really important. You should allow your online lesson to breathe. Give your learners space to prepare, carry out and produce the reaction to your tasks. Don't rush from one task to the next. With regard to teaching materials, the expectation is, of course, to continue to use the printed textbooks that you have been using in your face-to-face -face classes. This is okay. However, as the medium is mainly audiovisual, you have to use scans of the textbook pages to show on the monitor, ideally in the form of PowerPoint slides. Avoid using the printed textbooks when you teach because there's a danger of your job being relegated to that of a mere page turner. The textbook is not the king of teaching and learning. Inputs, tasks, communication and feedback are. This is why you have to have a very critical eye when you consider the many so-called e-learning tools and platforms that are available. Look at the true learning impact that these platforms offer. Look beyond and underneath the sleek cover and evaluate the quality of the inputs and tasks that they present. Are they relevant to and appropriate for your learners' needs? Are they motivating? What is the inherent authenticity of purpose of these activities? 
This brings me to the actual distance teaching. There are various ways to teach online, but we can divide them into two categories. Synchronous or online teaching, where you actually spend real time with your learners online. This would be the equivalent of traditional teaching. And asynchronous or offline teaching, which takes place at your learner's own time. And this may look more like homework. Now, if you know that online teaching involves these two modes of teaching, you should be prepared to take advantage of them. But how? This is where I believe online teaching has an advantage over face-to-face -face teaching. You can more easily differentiate your teaching to meet individual learners' profiles. For example, you can teach the lesson in the synchronous or online mode and then set additional tasks for individual learners, tailored to their specific demands. These tasks may also require that they go online and watch a video or read an article. You can ask all your learners to produce a summary of a text that you have specifically selected for them individually. Or alternatively, you can ask them to do different things with the same text, depending on their proficiency level. They can write a summary, or they can select the keywords from that text. But where distance teaching shines is if you decide to flip it. This means asking your learners to engage with different levels of language structures, for example, that they will all find in tasks that you have selected for them asynchronously, and then discuss these structures and carry out activities that are more detailed and hands-on during your synchronous lesson. Another idea is to have your learners work in group projects that involve internet search, focus on teaching other transversal skills, such as researching online, learning to look for the right kind of information online, and then discussing its relevance and impact. The last and equally important issue to consider in online and distance education is, of course, assessment and feedback. Online and offline lessons offer a unique opportunity for engaging in alternative ways of assessment. One such type of assessment is self-assessment and peer assessment. If you can, keep a record of all your lessons. Ask your learners or your learners' parents permission to record the online sessions and then upload them on the cloud and share them with them. This can have many positive effects. For example, as there is a record of the lesson, this means that the learners can listen to or view it as many times as they want. Now, of course, most of them will not do that unless there is a reason. So offer them a reason. Ask them to focus on their own performance, their own speech. They can become involved, probably for the first time ever, in meta-linguistic and meta-cognitive activities that ask them to think about how they carry themselves during the lesson, how they handle interactions, how they use English, what kind of mistakes they make, how good their communication or accommodation skills are. You can also ask them to offer opinions about their peers' use of the language, written or spoken, and engage in dialogues that help all become more aware of their strengths and weaknesses. There are so many things that you can focus on when you have a record of your lesson. And, of course, it goes without saying that this record will be invaluable for your own evaluation of your lesson, your handling of the tasks and activities, classroom management, your own use of English even. For example, how truly communicative it is and how much management talk you use. So teaching online can be a good opportunity for teachers of English to achieve more than simply teach English in a different mode because the times demand it. You can learn more about the uses of English online, on YouTube especially, but also on other popular social media like Instagram uh, or TikTok. You can learn to use more visuals as input and more text as input, to engage your learners in speaking activities, to use their L1 and any other language they may share in innovative ways.
You can differentiate your instruction and experiment with new ways of teaching, taking small steps at a time. And you can use alternative ways of assessing your learners and evaluating your own lessons and yourself as a teacher. Last but not least, think security. Imagine this is going to be a probably once in a lifetime occasion where all the schools of the world will move online for a considerable amount of time as well. This is a wonderful opportunity for exploring online education, making global connections between learners of English and other subjects from different territories and countries, and seeing how it can truly make an impact. But it is another opportunity to inform ourselves and our learners of the perils of going online. We have to train ourselves and our learners to use the internet responsibly and carefully to make the best of it without exposing our or other people's privacy and human rights. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you have any queries that have to do with online teaching and learning and I'll do my best to address them. As always, I look forward to communicating with you. Bye for now.